Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2. Good to see you. And we're with Art Kirsch, my partner in crime, and Michelle Fabrega, our wonderful contributing expert for love and relationships. Michelle, good to see you again. Great to be here. Thanks. Yeah, good morning. Good afternoon, whatever time it is. Um, <laughs> you know, a while back, we were discussing uh, a relationship at a crossroads and uh, having doubt. And let's say you go down the path and and you, you figured, you know what? It may be time to move on. Uh, how, how might people best handle that to say, OK, I can make a decision and now I have to move on? What is the process? in that that would help somebody who is at a very difficult point uh, in their relationship uh, and thinking about what to do about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, um, yeah, like you said, we, we talked about doubts, which, you know, can be little um, niggling thoughts that come along. But I think when you're at a point where, gee, you know, it, maybe it's time to end this relationship. One of the things I want to say is that this can be a really rich time to take some time and energy really to look honestly at the issues because I think this is, it's an valuable investment really because we learn so much in relationship with others and to walk away prematurely from a relationship, I think without doing our due diligence is really to miss out on the chance of really taking the relationship to the next level. And you never really know what's, which way it's gonna go, right? You can deepen the relationship or you might indeed choose to end the relationship, but there's something to, there's something powerful and to look at that. And even if you do decide to end the relationship, you know, you have, t you know, taken some time to unpack what the learning that you've had, and it can help you to proceed more amicably forward if you've already had some of these conversations. So if it's all possible, obviously there's situations where this wouldn't be appropriate, but if it's possible, it's great to take a look together, really, especially you've been together, you know, for a long time or or you have children together, I would say. You know, and there's some different steps that we can look at. Yeah. I, I find that really interesting. Uh, and you bring up an excellent point that people don't think about. When you get to this crossroads and you're so serious, you know, this problem is so serious, you're considering ending the relationship. What we don't often recognize is that's really an opportunity to deepen the relationship. You just got you're kind of repeating in a not as quite an eloquent way as what you said. And that's where that's where that kind of if you can get over that hump with your partner, that really does contribute to a wonderful, wonderful, deep, meaningful relationship. So we shouldn't I guess what I'm saying is we shouldn't take coming to this crossroads too lightly. Well, yeah, I mean, I would say that it can be, we don't really know, it's good to be open, basically, and stay curious, because we don't really know which way it can go. And if we don't, because sometimes we don't bring things up, you know, we oh, let, oh, it's not that bad. And then we, then things kind of erupt at some point. And this is a, a time to really clear the air of things that haven't been said or, or handled well or whatever. And so it can be, it can be a possibility to deepen something. And um, I guess I'm kind of a, I like to consider myself like really pro relationship in the sense that, you know, a relationship that's been, a, that you've had for a while or even a couple of months, even, I mean, the grass is not always greener somewhere else. You know, we bring our stuff with us. We bring our own patterns with us and a relationship requires the two people to have the relationship. So to just, you know, to just run for the exit is, it's not always the best strategy, obviously. So, um, you know, basically, you know, there are different things to look at. You know, one of them is, is, is you know, if there's been a, a, a breach of trust, so can it be rebuilt? And sometimes people assume, no, it, you know, once trust is broken, it's over. Well, you know, was there a misunderstanding? You know, is there, what is the rift that actually happened? And to talk about it with your partner, share openly, you know, what it meant to you, what the other person was experiencing. So when we can basically feel heard and understood uh, and, and our feelings accepted, you know, that's a way to rebuild trust. Obviously, if it's something, you know, you know, huge, like, you know, having, you know, an affair or something like that, you know, often a, a counselor or coach can help 
help you move through that together, assuming you both want to. Um, but it's something to, you know, take your time, I guess I would say. It's something important to take your time on that. It's kind of interesting, um, uh, being in California, uh, it's depicted in films a lot about people who go from relationship to relationship, but everybody still remains friends and they get together. And I've actually known a number of people who have ended relationships with children over long periods of time, and somehow they, uh, they uh, enjoy enough of what they had together to keep the relationship friendly enough and even loving enough. Okay, so this happened or that happened, but we still have the kids together. We share these experiences where I know that uh, there's, uh, I'm not going to mention names, but one person who, who uh, uh, got divorced and uh, had children and uh, there was another woman involved. And but eventually they all became uh, close friends. And when he died, the family still get together because they have blended uh, uh, half siblings and uh, they both uh, had shared experiences of, of joy as well. And I don't know all the reasons for the breakup or anything, but they, to this day, continue to meet, uh, uh, at least uh, up to a couple of years ago, before uh, uh, people stopped meeting it again. But uh, it was a large blended family of people who had common interests, who cared about themselves. So, but uh, getting back to the premise of what we're talking about, but if it's time to end it, uh, what's the best way, do you think, uh, for somebody to finally uh, come to grips with themselves and, and move on? Uh, yeah, I have a couple more things I want to share before we <laughs> were at the point of ending it. Is that okay if I go yeah. into that? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I mentioned the thing about trust. The other thing being, if the relationship feels stagnant and it's like, you know, wow, you know, it's I'm getting kind of bored here, whatever. The question to ask is, you know, you know, what is my part in this? What can I do to kind of rekindle some energy here? And, you know, can I be more curious and open? Um, what, can I bring that to my partner? And can they bring more of that to me? Can we make time to learn and grow together and, you know, experience new things? So it's sort of like, can we sort of, you know, kind of fire things up here a little bit? And and um, what are our dreams for the future together? And can we can we support each other in that? So that's actually another thing to look at. If, if that's the issue that you're just like, mm, I don't know why I'm here. What can be done to, you know, rekindle things basically? Are there are there uh, other things that you can do that you should do when you're at that crossroads before you before yeah. you take the the road that says divorce? What other things can you do? Yeah, yeah, and and, and yeah, we're talking about divorce and also possibly you know maybe somebody you're dating for months or years or whatever, not just necessarily a marriage, right? But yeah, also to look at how you're handling you know your communication skills, right? I mean, this is something that I help with people help people with all the time around how are they handling conflicts? How are they talking to each other? You know, are we, um, have we gotten so reactive sometimes to a certain issue? You know, there's these, uh, Dr. John Gottman, he's a, you know, a marriage expert. He talks about, you know, are there, it's just, there's solvable problems and perpetual problems. And so the cool thing is that there's hope in this because we think every problem has to be solved, but not all problems are going to be resolved. But the question is, can we talk about the issues with, you know, with some warmth in our tone, with acceptance, affection? You know, maybe somebody has a relative that, you know, it's just it's part of the world, part, part of the package that's difficult for the other partner. It's like, can we, oh, I don't want to do this with this person, whatever. And it's like, can we find a way to, you know, this person's in my life, then they're in your life. And so, you know, how can we bring humor and kindness to these kinds of issues, right? Because obviously if a problem is, if we're continually gridlocked on a problem, then, you know, things can get, you know, a flashpoint for, you know, upset and, and handling conflict skillfully is a very important skill to develop in any relationship, I would say. Sure. You, you mentioned um, the fact that, you know, on my Art and I have been married for so long, our mind goes to uh, partners of 30 to 50 years. Not, you know, not to one another, although uh, <laughs> it, it, that would be wonderful, too. <laughs> but, but, it was a little was vague there, the way you mentioned the way you said it. Yeah. What I was going to, Art's full of secrets. Um, what I was going to mention is, is something you brought up, and that is that even at our ages, 
um, relation, you could have a new relationship that's only three months old, six months old. Um, and, and at that point, what you're talking about, if you reach a, re a crossroads in that short a relationship, everything's relative. Like when you've been married 50 years, three months is pretty short. Um, when you reach, reach a crossroads in your mind in that kind of a short relationship, you really owe it to yourself to do what you're talking about. Sit back, take a second, analyze it, think about what, where it's coming from, why is it going, how's our communication? Because you'll never get a relationship that goes any longer if you just choose to go down what I call the divorce road. Mm, right. And, yeah, and yeah. So my question for you, I guess, is is does it does it get any different as you get older? C couples who are dating in their sixties, um, is it a whole lot different than couples who are or people who are have a relationship in their thirties or forties? Does age well, make a I mean, difference? Uh, in general, it probably does, but really, it's about the specific situation. I mean, some of us. You know, I know for myself, my skills in relationship when I was in my 30s, not so great. You know, that that's where I was then. And, you know, if we're hopefully up leveling our skills and like you said, noticing the patterns, you know, if, if all my relationships are pretty short and then when things start to deepen, you know, I don't want to stay around or when things we have a difficult conversation, then it's too much or whatever. That's something to look at. Assuming you want your relationships to go longer than just, you know, this three, three, you know, three month rolling window or something like that. Most people do, right? So it, it's good to really, I mean, there's so much to learn from a relationship that's that's going well, of course, but even a relationship that's not going well and how, what are the tweaks you can make? Like, wow, my reactivity in this situation is very upsetting to my partner. So can I learn to do it differently? And is that something I'm willing to do? Do I want to grow here and be a, you know, a kinder human and a, and a so these are things that, I mean, we learn in relationships and we get better in relationships um, if we're willing to, to, you know, to learn from what we see and, and what happens. So, you know, and obviously there are reasons to end a relationship sometimes. And so, it, but it, it's good to just, I guess I just, I have this, I've, you know, I've talked to many people about the relationships. Moms, they have regrets like, wow, I, I think I could have worked harder. I wish I had, you know, maybe gone to a coaching counselor to, with my partner, we could have resolved that issue. Um, I, I'm out here single now and it, it's, it's different. It's harder, you know, whatever. So it, I think it's just, I want, I want people to feel that they did what they could because it, it's worth preserving a, a relationship that's, that's had some, you know, some good experiences together. Well, I, sure I, I think this has been a great conversation. Uh, uh, as always, it gives people a lot to think about. It's not just black and, and white, but uh, I think, uh, when you reach a crossroads, to paraphrase Yoga Berra, sometimes you have to take it. Uh, <laughs> so, so as long as uh, uh, you're thoughtful about it, uh, you think it through and find out, should I zig or zag? Should I, as you said, get to a fork in the road and take a fork? Or maybe it's time to, when you get to a fork in the road, put, put down roots. So, yeah. Any, anyway, you've given us a lot to think about, as always, and uh, uh, we thank well, you for Let me that. just comment again. I want to, circ sorry, I want to circle uh, back to, you know, yes. how to end a relationship, right? And so I think that's, ideally, you, you talk about it and you, and you do it together, right? People don't always do it this way, but that's my invitation, is that you have an actual conversation in person, and yeah. you talk about what's not working, and, you know, maybe you have some wow, I really enjoyed the time we did spend together. I wish you well, and this is not going to work for me. You know, I understand. Well, you know, I know it can be a messy conversation perhaps, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. And maybe you do that, you know, with a counselor <laughs> if necessary. But I, I think it can be, um, um, ideally, we don't just, you know, just leave and not really explain because then then our partner's left wondering and it, it's just, anyway, creates awkwardness. So. That's but Michelle, I think that's really smart advice um, because one of the themes of this conversation and, and the last one about uh, having doubts has really been um, valuing the relationship and learning. We all learn from our mistakes, our bad relationships, our doubts. 
Um, and part of the learning is sharing and recognizing what we did. This is what we've been talking about, what we might have done wrong or whether we're willing to grow and change. And when it comes to divorce or ending a relationship, that's a meaningful relationship, um, it's kind of like negotiating your exit from a company. You can't <laughs> just walk out the door and never show up again. You've got to sit down with the boss or the, you know, the personnel department, and you've got to kind of negotiate the, the, the leaving package. <laughs> uh, yeah, and also you want to get a good reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, we've talked in the past about, and we're going to get, you know, about kind of having, when you have resentment or kind of unfinished business with someone, it, it, it comes with you. It, yeah, it, it lands yeah. in your next relationship. So ideally, you know, you kind of, I mean, you can't always tie it up in a nice bow or something, but you know, you have some conversation, some sort of closing completion sort of conversation. Now, speaking of closing and completion, I think there's a longer conversation to be had about ending relationships. Right. And, and so also, let's leave that for another time. As we end this episode with a good as we feeling. Come to the cross as we come to the crossroads of this conversation, and it's time to end this episode. So yes. until the next time, uh, I still love you both. And, <laughs> and everybody out there, okay, uh, in our audience, we hope that you're loving us too. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Good. Michelle, thanks so much. Thanks. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.